I know some of you who did my last mystery challenge did lots of flying geese and probably got sick of doing flying geese at the end. But um, uh, th uh, there was a method for doing fast flying geese and that's how to make four flying geese at one time. And so that's what I'm going to show you right now. Now, um, a lot of times a pattern will give you the size of the blocks, the large squares and the small squares for making flying geese because a flying geese is made up of two half square triangles and one quarter square triangle. Now you remember a half square triangle is a, a square cut in half once uh, and a quarter square triangle is a, a square cut in triangles twice. Okay, And then the straight of grain on the quarter square triangle is the long edge and the straight of grain on the half square triangles is the two long edges. But instead of cutting them up and putting together, you're going to use them as they are and we're going to be doing something with these four blocks. Now there is a formula, if you want to know what the formula is, for cutting these flying geese. And um, flying geese are uh, shaped so that the long side and the short side, there's a formula for that. Uh, the short side is half of the long side, so it could be a two by four flying geese, or a two and a half by five, or a three by six. So the way you figure out what the, fin the size you need to cut is, you do it based on the finished size of the block. So you take that large square as the finished long side, that's the long side of the flying geese, and you add a one and a quarter of an inch. Okay, the short side, which is the half square triangles, is the narrow side of the flying geese block, and that you add seven eighths of an inch. So, for an example, if you have a two and a half by five inch finished flying geese, you would cut the large square at six and a quarter because it's five plus one and a quarter, and you'd cut the four small squares at three and three eighths, which is two and a half plus seven eighths of an inch. Uh, if you had a three by six inch finished flying geese, you would cut the large square at seven and a quarter, that's six plus an um, inch and a quarter, and you'd cut the four small squares at three and seven eighths, so that's three plus seven eighths of an inch. So that's the basic formula for flying geese. Okay, so here I have my large square and I have my four small squares already cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line through these small squares. And since it's a dark uh, fabric, I'm going to use a light pencil. And you could use, even use, if you wanted to, use a mechanical pencil because these lines get cut off and they're not going to show. Or you can use a pen. A pen. Sometimes I've used a pen. But you want to make sure you draw the line right down the center. Okay, of all four of the squares. You want to take, uh, when you're using a pencil, you want to take uh, in account the width of that lead so that it goes right through the center. Okay. Now sometimes, in order to keep the fabric from moving, I will take my two squares, put them on top of each other. Sometimes it makes it easier to draw on when you do that. So let's see if that works a little better. Okay, so make sure you draw the line on the wrong side. This is a batik, so there is no wrong or right side, but I'm drawing a line on whichever side it is. Okay, so I've drawn my line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, lay our squares, small squares, on the big square, like this, so that they go through the opposite sides. And make sure you line up the edges of the square perfectly, because that really affects whether these flying geese come out right or not. Okay. I'm going to line up both squares perfectly on the edges of the square. And you want to make sure that line, these lines go through each other. And I'm going to take some pins and I'm just going to pin the edges down so that they don't move when I'm sewing. Okay, so I'm going to pin those, that side, and then I'm going to pin the other side. Now I'm going to do one little trick here. See where this comes together right here? 
I'm going to clip those so that they don't overlap and so that there's no fabric that gets on top of each other. Okay, so that they're going to stop. See how they're just kind of go together that way? Okay, but I'm going to add some pins over here too because I want to hold down those edges. So when I'm sewing, they don't move around on me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on each side of this line. Say, so, so I'm going to put on my quarter inch foot and I'm going to sew down one side and make sure I get it lined up right. Okay, and if it's a little smaller than a quarter inch, you're better off than being a little bigger than a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now I'm going to sew a quarter an inch from one side of the line. Move my pin if I have to. Hold those lines together. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on the other side of the line. Okay, now I'm going to cut my threads. I can take my pins out. And then I'm going to cut these apart right on that line that I drew. Okay, and I cut these little threads off here. Okay, and I'm just going to finger press these up. You're going to press these little triangles up. Just like that. So you're going to have two sets of triangles that look like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our other two triangles, other two squares, I'm sorry, and we're going to put them on the corner that's left and we want to make sure that this line goes right through the center of these two triangles here. So I'm going to put some pins on this to hold this. Okay, do the same thing with this one. Again, make sure you line up the edges of the square, the big square and the little square perfectly. And now again, I'm going to sew on a quarter an inch from each side of this line. Now, my goal is to get my machine to start here at this little, where these two come together. And the same thing here. So let's start sewing. And I can do one right after the other. I'm going to turn it around, sew the other side. And then I can do this one the same way. Just pull the other one out of the way. Turn that one around. Cut my threads. Okay, and then I can clip them apart. Take my pins out. And then I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut these apart. And 
And then I have my flying geese. And I have four flying geese at the same time. And they all come out exactly the same. Come out with a quarter of an inch seam at the top. And it, if you have to make a lot of flying geese with the same fabric, it just makes putting together so much quicker. So the next time you have a pattern that calls for lots of flying geese, try this method and you'll find that you get more flying geese than you'll ever want.